I understand is that we're working on, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Bhagavad Gita chapter 18, text 65. And uh, I thought, you know, uh, since this is kind of a conclusion and a summary, that we can uh, talk about Krishna consciousness in general, and we'll talk about the verse as well. <clears throat> so, um, are we actually ready to start, or should we wait? Okay. <clears throat> So, manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskuru mam e vaishya si satyang te pratijani priyo si me. All right, so this is our Sanskrit of the verse, and um, the translation is always think of me. Become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Okay, so um, this is our uh, verse for today. I'll read the purport because uh, it's not a very lengthy purport. The most confidential part of knowledge is that one should become a pure devotee of Krishna and always think of him and act for him. One should not become an official meditator. Life should be so molded that one will always have the chance to think of Krishna. One should always act in such a way that all his daily activities are in connection with Krishna. He should arrange his life in such a way that throughout the 24 hours he cannot but think of Krishna. And the Lord's promise is that anyone who is in such pure Krishna consciousness, will certainly return to the abode of Krishna where he will be engaged in the association of Krishna face to face. The most confidential part of knowledge is spoken to Arjuna because he is the dear friend of Krishna. Everyone who follows the path of Arjuna can become a dear friend to Krishna and obtain the same perfection as Arjuna. These words stress that one should concentrate his mind upon Krishna, the very form with two hands carrying a flute, the bluish boy with a beautiful face and peacock feathers in his hair. There are descriptions of Krishna found in the Brahma Sanghita and other literatures. One should fix his mind on this original form of Godhead Krishna. One should not even divert his attention to other forms of the Lord. The Lord has multi-forms, as Vishnu, Narayan, Rama, Varaha, etc. But a devotee should concentrate his mind on the form that was present before Arjuna. Concentration of the mind on the form of Krishna constitutes the most confidential part of knowledge. And this is disclosed to Arjuna because Arjuna is the most dear friend of Krishna's. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Shtapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandehang Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Bitam Tam Sajivam 
Sadvaitam Savadhunam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Brindavan Eshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pabhanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> So, what is Krishna consciousness? That's kind of uh, what we're thinking and talking about here at this uh, kind of the back end of the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, of course, has um, 18 chapters. And in these 18 chapters, Krishna uh, describes uh, the process of Krishna consciousness and the situation of the world to Arjuna. And this changes Arjuna's thinking. As a result, Arjuna uh, becomes a different person. He decides to fight, whereas previously he was resisting the idea of fighting. So, um, Krishna consciousness is not just (coughs) a religion or a club or a group of people it's more than that, you know. Uh, it's in one sense a change of heart, a lifestyle, and a worldview, you know. So uh, um, to really take full advantage of Krishna consciousness, to take full advantage, we should kind of come to grips with all these different aspects of Krishna consciousness. You know, it's, of course, we do have membership and we do have a sense of sangha. And, uh, you know, it is a religion. We talk about God. It's not just a philosophy. Uh, We do have philosophy. It's not just a lifestyle. It does require a change of lifestyle. Um, It's not just about sadhana, but we do have sadhana. And the process of Krishna consciousness purifies us from sin and helps us to rise in the three modes of nature. All these things are aspects of Krishna consciousness. So, (coughs) that uh, to fully understand Krishna consciousness, we have to kind of look at it from all these different points of view. That we're members, it's a religion, there's a philosophy, there's a lifestyle. In other words, we have to change the way we live. There's sadhana, things that we do, um, commit to doing every day. And that we will be purified from sin, our consciousness will change, our um, perceptions of the world around us will change. So, um, here's our verse again. Uh, And this verse kind of talks about Krishna consciousness in a nutshell. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer your homage to me. Thus you will come to me without fail, I promise you. This because you are my very dear friend. So, excuse me, thinking of Krishna, becoming a devotee, worshiping, and offering homage. So, in a nutshell, that's what Krishna consciousness is. It's all these different things. Thinking of Krishna, becoming a devotee, worshiping Krishna, and offering homage to Krishna. So, um, what we're hearing about 
uh, in this section from really from 1863, oh, I guess to about um, uh, 1871, um, we're hearing about confidential knowledge. Since this is chapter 18, um, this is a summary chapter. Both chapter 2 and chapter 18 are summary chapters of Bhagavad Gita. And being summary chapters, we kind of take a look back at the entire scope of what's been covered in Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna talks about confidential knowledge, he talks about more confidential knowledge, and then he talks about most confidential knowledge. And so what do we mean by these things, you know? Um, in a verse or two ago, Prabhupada in the purport explained that uh, confidential knowledge is about Brahman, you know, the fact that uh, there is one pervading essence underneath the entirety of creation. Then most conf more confidential knowledge is about uh, the super soul, recognizing that within the heart there is the Supreme Lord uh, talking to us. Um, and finally, most confidential knowledge is about surrender to Krishna as a person and service to Krishna and developing a relationship with Krishna. Here in this painting we have, of course, uh, where Krishna revealed to Brahma that uh, he was actually substituting as all the cowherd boys because Brahma had stolen them. And when Brahma stole the cowherd boys, he, um, you know, um, thought that they were hidden away. And when he saw them again, Brahma became confused. And Krishna could understand Brahma's confusion and he revealed to Brahma and to his brother Balaram that all these different boys were not the same original boys, yet they were perfect duplicates of them. And they were all the uh, forearm form of the Lord. Um, and in this way, you know, Krishna demonstrated his personal form and the uh, super soul in one sense, the forearm form. And uh, this amazed Brahma. So this is confidential knowledge. Not many people know this. And we can see that in the world, um, these things are completely unknown. We don't have any concept of confidential knowledge. Um, most people are not even aware that they're not the body. What to speak of Brahman being the uh, underlying essence uh, underneath everything. Most people have very little connection with the super soul in the heart. And absolutely almost nobody has any concept of the personal form of God. In fact, when you talk about the personal form of God, uh, most people have problems with that. In fact, there are whole religions that reject the personal form of the Supreme because of uh, a lack of knowledge of his personal form. Maybe they agree that he does have a personal form, but they don't know what that personal form is and they're afraid to talk about it or show it or to have any images of it or any of those kind of things. So this is really confidential because this isn't just data like knowledge that you can download in some kind of um, website, nor is it kind of the kind of data that you get when you go to a college class and you sit and the professor says some things and you jot some notes down. This knowledge will not be accessible to you if you do not have the right consciousness. So along with learning the details of Krishna consciousness, we also have to begin to develop the right frame of mind to be able to uh, understand the details of Krishna consciousness. And so the last slide here I wanted to show is these two verses that are very similar. One is in the ninth chapter and one is here in the 18th chapter, this 1865. So we have uh, in 934, Manmana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namaskaru mame vaishasi yukt vayavam Atmanam Parayanaha. Engage your mind always in thinking of me, become my devotee, offer obeisance to me and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. And how similar it is to this verse, uh, 1865, you know, 
manmana bhava madbhakta madhya ji mam namaskaru mam e vaishyasi. So far, two verses are identical, and then with this next word they change. Mam e vaishyasi satyam te pratijani priyosime. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer your homage to me, and thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. So one talks about being completely devoted to Krishna. You will come to Krishna through uh, these three methods, you know, uh, engaging your mind in thinking, becoming devotee, and uh, offering obeisances and worshiping. Actually, it's four, you know. Thinking about Krishna, becoming a devotee, offering obeisances, and worshiping those four. Both verses talk about those four ideas. But then one says, by doing that in ninth chapter, you will surely come to me. And in the 18th chapter, Krishna is saying, I promise you that you will come to me because you are my dear friend. So uh, both of these um, kind of say the same thing. And... Uh, this is showing Arjuna that Arjuna is very confidential uh, to Krishna. So he's uh, not just um, someone who has uh, no real connection with the Supreme Lord. He's an intimate friend of Krishna. So these uh, verses and uh, this chapter, you know, are summing up Krishna consciousness. Um, let me uh, pause at this point here and uh, just ask a question to see if anyone in our group here has any, um, you know, um, uh, questions about what we've discussed so far. I'll give you a minute to unmute yourselves and see if anybody pours forth here. Maharaj? Maharaj? Can you hear me? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we'll give little bit more time maybe for uh, devotees to think of something to say and I'll move along unless you want to you're going to ask a question or Tom or you're just uh, Mark, can you hear me I can hear see your voice your lips moving but I don't hear anything you're okay, probably so, still muted uh, yeah maybe there's a, some sound issue oh just a second I know I'm yeah. muted not you go ahead yes can you hear me now can you hear me now, Maharaj? Yeah, somebody, somebody is trying to ask a big question. Uh, uh, apparently, you can't hear us, nor you can hear that person. Can you try to stop? Let's take the next one. No, no, no. I've got to ask the mic. You can do it for me. Thank you. Thank you. So Marla in West Virginia is asking a question. Yes, Mara, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, yeah, good, good. All right. Well, near the end of the purport, there's a sentence here which says, one should not even divert his attention to other forms of the Lord. So That's does that mean we should think of Narsimhadev and you know like that or? Yeah, that's a good question actually, and I'm glad you asked it because um, the purport Prabhupada is giving us there is describing that um, in general we are trying to focus on Krishna, you know, so. If you look at most altars, even in um, ISKCON temples, you'll see s sometimes, you know, uh, Narayan forms, although not very often, you'll see Nishringadev. And occasionally you'll see, you know, Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman, you know, 
uh, so uh, we do worship these forms, but our uh, attention is actually on Krishna. There is a um, tendency in some of the other sampradayas to exclusively worship Vishnu or Narayan. Um, and in general, um, even the Sringadev, uh, Prabhupada made a special um, uh, point of allowing the Sringadev on the altar as a protector for the devotees. Though, in general, in ISKCON altars, we don't even usually have um, avatars like, you know, Vamana Dev and uh, Kurma, etc., etc. You do see temples uh, in India with these de- de- deities sometimes, but in general, in ISKCON, we focus almost exclusively on Krishna. And why is that? And the reason is because we are trying to cultivate a relationship specifically with Krishna and to re-enter the pastimes with Krishna. Um, Now, granted, there might be some devotees who actually have their original uh, swarup or their original relationship with Rama uh, as we do hear about in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Rupa and Sanatana's brother Anupam was a Ram Bhakta, and Rupa and Sanatana attempted to bring him over to uh, worship of Krishna, and he sincerely tried, but he was too dedicated to Ram, and they uh, actually concluded that he was wonderful for having remained steadfast in his connection to Ramachandra. So, um, you know, this is, uh, this is kind of what we're talking about here. We don't ignore uh, Ramachandra, and we do sometimes have festivals, especially on Ram Nomi and uh, Ram Vijay. We have festivals about Ramachandra. But mostly we're focused at Tarada and Krishna, uh, their pastimes and serving them. And generally in ISKCON temples, that's who you'll see. Of course, Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra, that's also in one sense Radha Krishna because Jagannath is Krishna. Uh, and what else might you see? Uh, Nitai Gorm, so Lord Chaitanya is Radha and Krishna in one form. So this is what we mean. We are usually focused on mostly exclusively uh, Radha and Krishna. Okay, okay. Oh, let's see if we have any other questions. Not, we'll go ahead. So, this section of um, Bhagavad Gita is wrapping things up, you know. Uh, The very first part of uh, the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, we heard about, um, you know, the uh, a rehash of karma yoga. And then in, uh, you know, the next part, we had a rehash of jnana, and then we heard about the yoga ladder. We find that uh, in general, People make gradual progress in spiritual life, and uh, they may make progress from um, being, you know, following rules and regulations so they can enjoy nicely in the material world. Then they come to the point of um, trying to search of what is really the meaning of life apart from material happiness because they come to understand that material happiness is 
uh, not really a, a worse, worthwhile goal. And then after that, they come to the point of uh, wanting to do some yogic meditation. And if they're lucky beyond that, then they become a bhakta. Of course, most of us skipped those in-between stages. We didn't uh, go through them because uh, we learned early on that they're a waste of time, that everything that you can get from the yoga systems through mystic meditation, everything you could get from study of uh, austere and very uh, uh, unusual, hidden, secret Vedic knowledge, uh, you can get that all from simply becoming a bhakti. So if you're a bhakta, you can automatically... And this is why, you know, in the next verse, Krishna will say, you know, that give up all these other things and just become uh, a bhakta because you will achieve everything, you won't lose anything, and you won't waste any time. So uh, this is the nature of Krishna consciousness. As we've been saying, Krishna consciousness is... Um, a philosophy. So we learn how Krishna consciousness or bhakti is different from, say, karma or jnan. You know, jnan is the process of speculation and uh, reading and understanding very difficult philosophy. And karma is the process of performing pious activities just for the sake of uh, enjoying in this material world, or possibly going to the heavenly planets. So all these are a waste of time. But if someone engages in devotional service, they will get everything that you could have gotten in karma, everything that you could have gotten in jnana, but they will get things that you could not have gotten in those other things. So it's, it's different in philosophy. It's also different in lifestyle. We do not have to undergo very difficult, um, you know, penances and austerities. We don't have to, um, you know, uh, read a lot of very esoteric verses and memorize them. Nor do we have to uh, undergo various yoga postures. Uh, rather, what bhakti is, is the change of heart, the uh, adoption of a, a lifestyle where more and more we are trying to focus our lives on Krishna, as Prabhupada said, and we're doing these four things. We're always thinking of Krishna, we're worshipping Krishna, we're uh, remembering Krishna and offering obeisances to Krishna. So we're doing these four things and by doing them our heart is changing and when our heart changes then um, we gradually become no longer uh, the uh, prisoners of this material world, and we become eligible to go back to the spiritual world. So again, I'll ask if there are any questions anyone has. Okay, so 
Nobody's asking a question. So <laughs> we'll continue a little bit more down this road of discussing this chapter and particularly these verses. Um, we learn that um, Krishna consciousness um, is more than just data. You know, if we have the wrong consciousness, even if we hear perfect Krishna consciousness philosophy, we will either not believe it, or we will not understand it, or we may even believe and understand it, but we can't follow it. So, all those things can happen. And uh, that's why it's not just philosophical. We are asked to do things. So, through the process of devotional service, so... We take a spiritual master and we follow directions of the spiritual master and he tells us to, you know, engage in service. So sometimes we might be engaged in deity worship or we might be uh, preparing for a festival or we might be managing something or we may be raising funds for a... Uh, some type of building or some kind of festival or we may be cleaning up after a festival or we may be cooking. So all these different things, they are all various types of service. So they're menial activities and we are not asking the temple for some kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, pay for doing these things. We're doing them of our own free will and we're doing them so that we can uh, purify our heart. Uh, in the world that we live in, everybody does something and there's a sense of barter. I do something and then I get paid for it. Or I give you a favor and I expect that when I need a favor, you will respond and do a favor for me. But devotional service is not a bargain or a, a barter system. Devotional service means that we do something for Krishna and we are not expecting uh, some kind of uh, return. We are simply doing it because we're trying to please Krishna. And of course, we do this a little bit, then we space out, then we do it a little bit more, and then we space out again. But if we continue, we find that we're spacing out less and we're engaged in Krishna's service more. And this means we're becoming purified. And as we become purified, our material desires tend to fall away. And as our material desires fall away, we can more easily understand Krishna consciousness. And we find it more pleasurable and easy to engage in Krishna conscious activity. In the beginning, engaging in Krishna conscious activities may seem very difficult. It may be quite um, uh, unpleasant in some ways to try to follow various devotional activities and, and to change the way we think, the way we work, way we use our time, all that can sound or seem very, very uh, difficult. And that's why sometimes people are afraid of Krishna consciousness or they learn about it and then they go away because they think this is too difficult. I have so many desires 
and I could not follow this lifestyle. But actually, if you try to follow as best you can, you'll discover that more and more, it's not just learning things, but you're being purified within. So when you're purified within, you understand what you're learning and you understand how important what you're learning is and you find that you can embrace it more and more. And at the same time, you discover the things that you really, really were addicted to for years and years become not so much important anymore. We find that we're giving them up automatically, not we're forcing ourselves away from them. We're just automatically giving them up. And so this is the nature of Krishna consciousness. We start a little bit and gradually Krishna helps us. We become purified. We understand more. We become liberated from our um, material desires. And as we become liberated, we embrace Krishna consciousness more and more. It becomes more and more natural for us. And in fact, Krishna consciousness is a natural process. It's natural for the soul to engage in bhakti. But we have been divorced from bhakti due to our material desires for many, many lifetimes. So now, when we try to focus on Krishna, we still find that we are... Uh, attracted to our old material uh, ways, our old material desires. But if we just continue, we'll discover that this will fade. So with knowledge, with sadhana, so sadhana, we do not only just service, but we do chanting every day by trying to focus on Krishna's name. That's the best way to purify the heart. And if we're doing that, we discover that becoming Krishna conscious is easy. And uh, the more we do it, the more we want to do it. And the more we want to do it, the faster we become more purified. So what starts out as a slow walk gradually ramps up to a you know sprint or a full out run because we're discovering that uh, Krishna consciousness is becoming easy for us. So this is some more about Krishna consciousness and this is how a person becomes purified. Um, any questions about that? I'll give another second for anyone to register to see if they have any questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, can you hear me? Yeah. So Maharaj, in the, in the, in the verse itself, not what you just commented on, in the uh -huh. verse itself, in Krishna's third statement, he said, offer your homage unto me. Can you elaborate um, what is Krishna asking for here? That he'll be what? Offer your homage unto me. Hmm. Oh, beer. I, I can't understand what you're saying, I'm afraid. In the first, in the first, the first, the first, the first itself. It, always think of me, become my divert, devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Yes, yes, yes. What is homage? Um, yes. Is that the word you're wondering? Yes, yes. Homage. Homage. Okay. So, um, homage is uh, respects. You know. So we we're seeing the Sanskrit is manmana, uh, man, 
It becomes a T when it meets up with the M of mana. So it's manmana, or thinking of me. Mana is to think, and mom is me. Bhava just become madbhakta, my devotee. So always think of me, become my devotee. Then we see uh, madhyaji, yaj, is the Sanskrit word of worship. So we think of that as, uh, you know, deity worship or any other kind of worship. And then mam namaskuru. So sometimes people say namaskars, you know. Namaskar is means that um, we're offering our respects. So, um, so that's the word that has been changed into English as homage. So homage is to offer your respects. So always think of me, manmana, bhava mad bhakta, become my devotee, madhya ji, worship me, and mam namaskaru, uh, offer obeisances to me, or offer homages or namaskaras. So homage is to offer various, um, you know, um, respects, usually in verbal form. It may also be offering a basis in the sense of bowing down to. Both of those, I think, are kind of what we mean by the word homage. Okay. So, the Bhagavad Gita uh, started out with Arjuna um, being in confusion. He claimed that uh, he would not fight. And at the end, we see that he did fight. So, over the chapters of Krishna consciousness that Krishna gives to Arjuna from chapter 2 to this chapter uh, 18, Krishna has changed Arjuna's mind. And we see a couple of verses ago that uh, Krishna says, okay, Arjuna, now what do you think? You know, uh, he doesn't say, I demand you, Arjuna, you do what I say. He's actually saying, what do you think, Arjuna? I've told you the Bhagavad Gita, and now it's your turn. Do you accept, or uh, are you still confused, or are you still going to refrain from fighting? And, of course, Arjuna will answer in the affirmative. He says, I have been convinced by your instructions, and I will fight. So, Arjuna is convinced by 18 chapters or maybe 17 chapters, if you just subtract two from 18, 16 chapters. He is convinced by uh, Krishna's arguments and he is changed from his uh, ad attitude of uh, wanting to escape from the battle to the attitude of being ready to fight. So, Krishna has done this. And um, similarly, we all face maybe not a battle the way that uh, Arjuna faced one, but we face a different battle, a battle within, a battle against our old selves, a battle against our material thinking, a battle against our material, material mental desires. We face a battle against those. And similarly, if we follow Krishna's instructions, um, manmana, always think of him, uh, mad, uh, bhava mad bhakto, become his devotee, think of him, become his devotee, Mamyaji, worship him, and Mam Namaskaru uh, to um, offer homage or obeisances. If we do those things, we will 
have the same effect as Arjuna. We will feel convinced and firm and we will be able to overcome the person that we once were. And uh, everybody has a person that they're leaving behind. That person that they once were that was on the road to sure destruction and we're leaving that person behind. Um, Instead, by inches and drops every day, we're performing sadhana and service. We're becoming a new person. Uh, It won't happen automatically, but if we follow Krishna consciousness, it will happen. Uh, We will discover that we are changed. It certainly happened to me. So, uh, um, over the years, I, uh, it's sometimes interesting to look back at the things that were once so important to me that have been left behind that uh, I don't miss, nor do I want to go back to. And I begin to see that more and more, Happiness really comes from a life which is focused on helping others through transcendental knowledge, from my own activities in sadhana and uh, uh, trying to counsel people, give them empathetic, uh, you know, words when they feel they need some uh, help, etc., etc. So. Uh, This is the real uh, effect of Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, why would anyone do what devotees do? We give up sex, we give intoxication, we give up meat-eating and gambling, which most people think are the prime things that give happiness. So, if there wasn't a higher taste, If there wasn't something real and tangible, how could someone give these things up and not just do it for a few days, but to do it year after year after year? There must be some kind of higher taste. And so this is what makes us fixed in Krishna consciousness, is this uh, higher taste that gradually comes and the purification, and the freedom from sin. So, when a sinful person hears that they have to surrender to God, it's terrifying to them. How can I do that? What will he do to me? Will he beat me? You know, uh, (laughs) what will happen next? So, um, this means that... um, we still have such a, a boatload, such a great weight of sin. And we hear about the spiritual world, we can scarcely believe it because we have such a huge weight of sin. But as these things lift, then we find understanding Krishna consciousness easier. We're not so much afraid of God. We're not so much uh, skeptical about the nature of the philosophy of spiritual life. We can easily take to it. So, um, this is the most confidential knowledge. Uh, If you just hear Krishna consciousness, but you're not purified, you don't have any mercy, you'll go right by. It's like it never happened. And this happens all the time. Our Sankirtan devotees go out and they approach people and some people just tell them to get lost or some people just rush right by. They don't stop, they don't think. Uh, And even if they did stop, they would just think, what kind of crazy stuff are these people talking about? Uh, I've got an appointment to make. I, I'm late, so uh, get lost. I'm going on. So this means that a person is too sinful. That means that it didn't get the mercy. This means that they're still convinced 
of material happiness that always shines but never delivers. So, uh, unfortunately, this is what happens. But when someone gets the mercy, when someone is in the right consciousness, when someone has been a little bit purified of sin, then when they hear about Krishna consciousness, they think, oh, this, this is reasonable. I, I could uh, read more about this. And then their whole spiritual life might begin at that point. So, uh, any uh, final questions about uh, this section as we're winding up here? Yes, I can hear you nicely. Yeah, you said like, um, if we take the Krishna consciousness, we get purified, we become purified. So, right. how should we know we are purifying? Still, we still my my point, like my, I'm, th I'm thinking like, I have material desires still and I don't, I don't have the taste of, uh, it's not getting taste when I'm chanting. I'm not able to hear my um, Maha Mantra, like my mind is going anywhere, like I can't focus on it, like how <laughs> we, like, how can we understand I am getting purifying when I am taking Krishna consciousness, like how should we know? Well, you know, there is a verse that says, you know, um, that when someone eats, they feel satisfaction, they feel freedom from hunger, and they feel, what is it, um, happiness or something, I forget what, there's three things, tushti, pushti, and something. So, um, when you're actually becoming purified in Krishna consciousness, you begin to feel a, you know, a let up of the modes of nature. You feel... Uh, life becoming easier, you don't feel yourself so uh, harassed by the karma of all your bad actions. And in time, you will actually make progress in chanting. You will start to get a little bit of a taste. But I agree, it does take a lot of work. And oftentimes, we're just not ready to do that work. But then we have to ask the question, well, why not? You know, um, there's nothing stopping any of us from chanting good japa. It's just that we get lazy and we get uh, uh, caught up in things that we think are more important. And because we think other things are more important, then our japa suffers uh, and we don't get the taste. Um, you know, it takes gradually um, figuring out a strategy. And maybe the strategy is not the same for everybody, but there are probably some things that work for mostly everybody. You know, one of the things is, is are you sleepy? You know, I, personally, I almost never sit down and chant because I don't trust my body. The minute I sit down, I'll start to nod out. So I, you know, I walk when I chant, you know. And uh, I try to chant at a time and a place where there's nothing interesting going on around, around me. I'm not, people aren't talking, uh, people are not doing something, uh, there's not a television on, there's not a radio on, there's not something uh, being played. You know, it's kind of a chance to sort of focus in. And I find it's a, it's a battle. You know, I do better for some months than I do worse for some months. But overall, uh, 
if I apply myself, I find that uh, it when when you chant of an hour or two of good japa, you feel very different than when you just kind of did it to be done with it, you know. So it takes some effort, uh, but still, even uh, putting all that aside, I I know that I'm not the person that I was. 40 years ago. Uh, I'm nothing like that person. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean I'm pure or anything like that. But all I'm saying is that uh, there's a big difference, you know. I, I can tell that. Um, and, you know, I just think that if I can do it, practically anybody else could do it. Now, there's nothing special about me, you know. So it's just applying it. And applying it every day, that, that's the issue. If, if you work at it every day, it will definitely have a cumulative effect on you. All right, so uh, we are coming right up to the hour here at uh, uh, 9 o'clock. So uh, uh, any final last words? If not, then we'll... Thank you for the nice class, Maharaj. Yeah, Haribo. Thank you all for your encouragement. Uh, Nartam, where where are you on planet Earth? Where where are we looking at this front room? Maharaj, you're in Jersey City. Oh, you're in, in Bayonne. Jersey. Sorry, Bayonne. In Bayonne. This yes, this evening. Ah, I see. I see. So, thank you very much. How long have you been doing this Sangha on Zoom, this particular? <laughs> uh, quite a few years, uh, but on and off and on and off, COVID attacked us, so we decided right. to start it again. So we're trying, we're trying our best to do some kirtan and some classes like this. Uh, hopefully we can continue and COVID cannot um, stop us again. So oh, we, we will see. All right. So, thank you very much, Maharaj. Please accept our humble obeisances. Yeah, accept my humble basis. Fan chakalpati bischa kripa sindhu vyeva chapin pavanir vaishnavibhinu. All glories to the Vaishnav devotees there. So, thank you, Maharaj, and thank everybody who has joined us online. Uh, sorry we didn't have enough questions uh, for you. <laughs> I think what happens when the devotees see uh, sannyasis, they get a little intimidated, so uh, mm -hmm. they're afraid to ask questions. So hopefully next time you're able to join us, we will have some more questions for you. Okay, okay. Uh, where are you right now, Maharaj? You're in New York? Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn Temple. I know this background looks like, you know, maybe I'm out in a forest or something or... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually in my room. Behind yeah. me is a whole mess that you don't see me because of this uh, nice background that looks like maybe trees out of focus or something swirling in the wind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking Indraloka. You're thinking what? Indraloka. Indraloka, right. Uh, I was thinking of Goloka Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, now we're getting into gross mental speculation here. So uh, we better leave before it gets any worse here. So so thank, thank you, you again. all again. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Vaishnava uh, devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you all. Hare Krishna.